Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you and give you some tips on how to play the barbarian attack scenario of Catan Traders and Barbarians. It's such a different scenario. It almost feels like a completely new game because of all the new elements. Now, it's a bit complicated, but really worth learning, especially if you combine it with Catan Cities and Knights. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Before we start, if you're not familiar with Catan, have a look at my video where I explain the rules of the base game because you'll need them for this expansion. Barbarian Attacks is the full scenario of Traders and Barbarians. Here, the Catanians have become quite wealthy and have attracted the attention of vile barbarians looking for booty and to land in Catan's fertile coastlines. So brave knights decide to unite together against the invaders. To set up the board, place the desert and castle hexes like that here and here. Then place randomly two forests, two hills, three pastures, one mountain and two fields and place them all around the coastline. Then randomly place one forest, one pasture, one hill, two mountains and two fields inland. You should have one forest left. Place the numbers as shown here. Place one barbarian on the two and one on the twelve. The rest of the barbarians on the side of the board. Each player takes six knights. In this game you will use the 26 development cards for this expansion. You do not use those from the base game. Also, you're not going to use the largest army and you're not going to use the robber. It plays like a Catan base game, but you have five additional actions. During setup, you place one settlement and one city. Then after that, each time you build a settlement or a city, the barbarians attack. You roll the dice three times. If it's a seven, roll again until it's not a seven and all three numbers must be different. For each roll, place one barbarian on a coastal hex with that number. When there are three barbarians on a hex, it is considered conquered and the number is flipped face down. It no longer produces. You can't add more barbarians to a conquered hex and skip to the next roll. You also can't build roads, settlements or cities next to a conquered hex. If a city or settlement is only adjacent to conquered hexes, it is considered conquered and is turned on its side. You can't get victory points from it, and if it's on a harbour, you can't trade with it. Remember that if a settlement is near the desert or the castle, it can never be conquered. Also, if you run out of barbarians, there's no more attack. Another big difference in the actions is the development cards. These you need to play and resolve immediately as you buy them. So if you want to buy more than one, you would first buy it, play it, resolve it, and then buy more. Now, once you've used them, you need to discard them immediately. And if you run out of cards, you just reshuffle them and create a new deck. Also, you have to place a knight as soon as you play a knighthood or swift knight card. This card is also called black knight in some editions. With the knight card, you place the knight on one of the six paths adjacent to the castle. With a swift or black knight, you can place a knight on any path of your choice. Note that you can never place two knights on the same path. Another action you can take is to move the knight. After you are done trading and building on your turn, you may move each of your knights up to three paths, and that's free. You can also pay one grain per knight to move it an additional two paths, so it can move a total of five. When they move, knights ignore other knights, however they cannot end their move on a path occupied by another knight or adjacent to the castle. Once you've moved your knights, you can take the final action, expelling the barbarians. Check for battles on the coastal hexes starting from the fort next to the castle and proceeding clockwise. Knights win if there are more knights on the adjacent paths than barbarians on the hex. Those barbarians become prisoners and are distributed equally to the involved players. If each involved player receives a prisoner and there is one left over, the player who contributed the most knights takes the prisoner, the other player receives three coins. In case of a tie, you roll the dice. When knights win, turn the hex number back face up and any adjacent buildings back up, until the next attack, that is. If multiple players are involved and there are not enough prisoners to go around, each involved player rolls the dice. The ones who roll the highest receive a prisoner, the ones who didn't get any get three coins. 
Each two prisoners you hold are worth one victory point. After each victory, one of the involved players rolls one die and places it on the castle hex. Each of the six edges of the castle hex is marked with a different die roll result. The number roll determines one of the three possible orientation pairs of paths adjacent to the castle hex. The path adjacent to the edge marked with the number rolled and the path adjacent to the edge on the opposite side. Check each knight involved in the victory. If the path that the knight is on has the same orientation as one of the two paths on the castle hex, determined by the die roll, remove the knight from the board. Resolve each battle completely before moving on to the next one. For each knight you lost, you will gain three gold. Now, the big coins are worth five and the small ones one. Uh, you can use the gold to trade with other players or with harbour. Also, twice per turn, you can buy one resource card of your choice for two gold. When you roll a seven, you take a random card from the player of your choice, and players with more than seven cards lose half their cards rounded down. Finally, even when you play treason or intrigue cards, you can never move barbarians to the central hexes. Also, if you already have three barbarians in a hex, you can't add any more. The first player to reach 12 victory points in their turn is declared the winner. Barbarian Attack is a really good scenario to combine with Catan's Cities and Knights expansion. You'll use the Knights and the cards from Cities and Knights, not Traders and Barbarians. Now all the rules follow the Barbarian Attack, with these exceptions. You place a Barbarian on the map when you roll a black ship on the third die of Cities and Knights. Metropolis still protect against Barbarians, but City Walls don't. Merchants are lost if the Hex is conquered. Gold can buy resources, not commodities. Pay for knights, like in Cities and Knights, with a wool and an ore, but place them like in the Barbarian Attack. Knights can move freely, even if they are inactive and without following their own road. To move two more paths, an active knight will have to be deactivated. Also, an active knight can displace a weaker knight and thus deactivate it. When fighting barbarians, each active knight counts one point per strength, so one active mighty knight can fight two barbarians. When losing knights after a victory, you demote knights to a lower level. If the lower level knight isn't available anymore, or if it is a basic knight, take it out of the board and collect three gold. In this version, the prisoners are worth one point per three prisoners, not two, and the first player to reach 13 points wins the game. My tips to win at the Barbarian Attack are Start by watching the tips I gave on the Catan video, because they all apply here. The knights drive off barbarians and give you points, so make sure you build enough of them and that you build them early on. It's almost impossible to win alone in the barbarian attack, so it's a good idea for the players who have less points to build alliances. Build your strength in the middle hexes, because cities and settlements cannot be occupied there, so they guarantee your production. When playing with the Cities and Knights expansion, make sure you keep lower ranking knights in your supply so you can demote them instead of losing them. That's how you play the Barbarian Attack of the Catan Traders and Barbarians expansion. It's a really smart scenario. And if you combine it with Cities and Knights, it can be very competitive for experienced players. It should take around one and a half hours. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.